Hi, my name is Beth Jeffrey from My Tutoring Bee, and today's video is all about multiplying with the box method or grid multiplication. So this is just an alternative method for multiplying multi-digit numbers. So for multiplying numbers with two digits, three digits, four digits, and more, this is just another way to multiply those numbers. A lot of my students really love this method. It does take a little bit longer than the standard algorithm, but that's okay. It's a lot easier for them to do when they're first learning how to multiply these larger numbers. So let's get into it. And let me show you how we do this method. So let's start with this problem here, 37 times five. The way that we're going to start off is by breaking these numbers up into expanded form. So for example, 37 is 30 plus seven. Five is just a single digit number, so we're gonna leave that as five. And now we can set up our boxes or our grid in order to multiply these two numbers. So we're going to start off, start off with 37. Since it is a two digit number, I'm going to have a box that is two boxes wide and one box long. Since the five is a single digit, I'm going to write the five here on the side. Since the 37 is a two digit number, I'm going to split this up into two pieces and 30 will go above this piece and seven will go above this piece. Now I do have another video that talks specifically about how to multiply these larger numbers that have a lot of zeros in them. So any number, any multiple of 10, 100, 1000. So I'll link that below uh, in the description if you want a little bit more practice with that skill. But basically what we're gonna do is multiply whatever number is on top here times whatever number is on the side here and then that product will go here in this singular box. So let's multiply 30 times five. So what I really want to focus on is the three times five. So three times five is 15. So that's what I'm going to start off with writing 15. And then since 30 has one zero in it, I'm going to put on another zero on the end of that 15 to make 150. So 30 times five equals 150. All right, let's erase these arrows so that we can go on to the next box here. So for this box, we're going to multiply again. We're gonna go all the way from the side times whatever number is on the top here. So now we're multiplying five times seven. So five times seven is just gonna be 35. Now we want to add these two numbers. Once we have all of our multiplication done, we're going to add up whatever we have in the boxes. So over here to the side, I'm gonna write 150 plus 35, zero plus five is five, five plus three is eight, and then one plus zero is one. So 37 times five equals 185. All right, let's go on to some other, some other examples. So here we have a two digit times two digit number. So let's go ahead and set up our boxes. We know that we're going to need two boxes across the top and two boxes going down the side. So I'm going to set this up like this and then just split it up here in the middle. Another method to do this, let me actually erase this. Another method that uh, some of my students enjoy doing just in case drawing that large box and then cutting it up into pieces is challenging or more difficult. You can simply create boxes, singular boxes as you go. So we know we're going to need two boxes going across this way and then two boxes going down. So you're certainly welcome to do it that way as well. So let's actually break up our numbers here into that expanded notation. So 26, the two is for two tens, right? So in other words, that value of that two is worth 20. And then the six ones would be represented like that. 18 is going to be 10 plus eight. I did not give myself enough room here, so I'm just gonna scoot this box down here. Okay, so now those numbers are what's going to go along the top and along the side. Now it does not matter which way you put this. You can put the 20 and the six up top here. You can put the 10 and the eight along the side, 
or you can do it the other way. Let's go ahead and do 10 and 8 along the top, and then 20 and 6 along the side. You can also put them on this side as well, just as long as you're multiplying whatever number is on the top times whatever number is on the side. So let's go ahead and start multiplying. So our 20 times 10, again, we're kind of thinking of those significant numbers, the 2 times 1, that gives us 2. And then we've got 1, 2 zeros. So I'm going to put 1, 2 zeros after the 2 here. Okay, and then let me get rid of this. Now, another great thing about this method is you don't have to follow a specific order or pattern. You can do any of these boxes next. You don't have to start with this box. You can start with any box that you want to. So that's one of the flexibilities of this method that some of my students really love. Okay, so now let's go ahead and fill in this box. So that means we're multiplying 20 times 8. So you see how I'm going from... This number, this box represents this number times this number up top. So 2 times 8 is 16. And then we've got that 0 from the 20, so I'm just going to add that on to the end there. All right, now let's do this box down here. 6 times 10. Again, we're going from the top and the side. Wherever that those two numbers meet, that's where that product goes. So 6 times 1 is 6, and then we've got the 0 from the 10, so we put a 0 there to make 60. And then our last box right here, it is going to be where the 8 and the 6 meet, so 8 times 6 is 48. All right, now we're ready to add these numbers up. You can add them all up all at once, like I'm going to do. You can break them apart and add up just two numbers at a time, whatever is easiest for you. All right, let's go ahead and add up all of these all at the same time. In our ones place, we just have the 8. And then 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 4 more is 16. And then 1 plus 1 is 2, plus another 2 is 4. So we get 468. Okay, we've got one more example here. Move this. We've got 453 times 31, so that means we have a three-digit number times a two-digit number. So let's go ahead and set up the grid or the box for the, these numbers. We've got three digits. We've got 400, right? The fours in the hundreds place, so its value is 400. Five tens is 50, and then three ones is three. And then for the 31, the 3 is in the tens place, so that represents 30. And the 1 is in the ones place, so that represents 1, 1. Now let's go ahead and set up our boxes here. With these larger numbers, you're going to want to really make sure to give yourself enough room to work. So as I'm setting up these boxes, my larger place values, those hundreds and even sometimes the tens place, give yourself a little bit more room here. So I'm actually going to move this line over just a little bit. So see how these uh, larger place values I have made a little bit wider than these smaller place values. Um, as you practice these, you'll notice that you'll, you might need a little bit more room because you're going to have a lot more zeros in those places. So let's go ahead and show what that looks like. So we've got 400, 50, 3, and then down the side here we're going to do 30 and 1. So you can see here in this first box, since we're multiplying the 400 times 30, we're going to have some more zeros coming from that product than we would for, let's say, 3 times 1, right? So that's what I mean by giving yourself a little bit more room in these boxes that are going to be over on the left of your grid. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply. So let's start with the 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. And then I've got two zeros from the 400 and one zero from the 30. So that means we need a total of three zeros. And again, use that other video that I'm linking in the description. It has a, a lot more information about this particular skill, about how to multiply these larger numbers with zeros. Okay, and now let's go ahead and move on to 
Now we're going to do, let's do this box. Actually, let's go in a different order since we did, we went across on this first or the second problem. Let's go down for this problem. So now we're going to do 400 times one. So let's just multiply our significant numbers. Four times one is four. And then we've got the two zeros from the 400. So we're going to go ahead and put in the two zeros there. All right, now let's go for this second column. Now we're going to multiply 50 times 30. So let's focus first on the five and the three. Five times three is 15. And then we've got one zero from the 30, one zero from the 50. So that means we need both of those represented, both of those zeros represented in our product. And then down here, 50 times one, you might already know that anything times one is just going to be that number. Um, but five times one is five, and then we've got the zero, so we wind up with 50. And then here we're going to multiply three times 30. Again, these are some can be sometimes tricky when we're all the way over here on the side. So we just want to make sure to take the number from the side that matches up with the number from the top. Since this box is matched up with this 3 and this 30, then the product of those two numbers is what's going to go here. So 3 times 3, we're going to focus on those significant numbers. 3 times 3 is 9. And then we only have one zero from the 30, so that is going to go right there. And then this last box is 3 times 1 and three times one is three. Now, let me move this over a little bit so that I can add these up. So again, there's a lot, we have six numbers to add here. You can add them up in pieces and then put it all together at the end, or you can add it all up all at once. I find that adding them up all at once isn't so difficult because we do have so many zeros. So when I line these up, that's another important thing, make sure that you're lining up your place values there's my 12,000, then I've got 1,500. We've got all of these zeros that are going to be in the ones and tens place, so I find that they're not so difficult to add up altogether. Also, another little tip that I like to tell my students is to check off the numbers as you write them down. When you have problems that have a large amount of numbers to add up, you don't want to miss any accidentally. I'm putting these in order from largest to smallest. You don't have to do it that way. I find it's easier to add them up. But as you can see, I've got all of my ones places lined up very neatly, all of my tens places lined up, and so on. So that's very important also so that you don't get too confused. Okay, so in our ones place, we just have this three in the ones place. In the tens place, nine plus five is 14. And then in the hundreds place, nine, sorry, five plus four is nine, plus one more is 10. And then two plus one plus one is four. And then one plus nothing is one. So we wind up with, oh, I'm gonna have to squeeze this in here, 14,043 as our answer. Okay, so I hope that that was very helpful for you in learning how to do the box method or grid multiplication. Please like and subscribe. That really helps, helps me out to make more of these videos for you. I would love to hear what you thought about this video in the comments below. Thanks. Take care.